So what if I told you that you could still get quality photos from your premium flagship phones for almost half the price? Well, that's where the Google Pixel 3a comes into play. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of We View and Review. And today, we're going to be talking about the Google Pixel 3a. This morning, it just got released in Singapore and I was lucky enough to be invited over to the Google HQ in Singapore to try out the Google Pixel 3a. Now, we were the first few ones in Singapore to actually have our hands on this phone. This phone was actually leaked about a week ago and everyone's been talking about it. Like, everyone expected the Google Pixel 4 to come out next, but no, they decided to come out with a Google 3a. And now, what's the 3a all about? The huge difference with the Google Pixel 3 and the Google Pixel 3a is the price. Now, you're obviously compromising a few features here and there, but you're not compromising that much. Over here, I have the Google Pixel 3a and the Google Pixel 3a XL. This phone actually comes in three different colors, just black, clearly white, and purple-ish. And like I said in the previous Google Pixel review, I love the way Google names their colors because it sounds super sarcastic in the most fun way. However, Singapore will not be having the purple-ish. So Singapore is just stuck with just black and clearly white. You see how sarcastic that sounds? Right out the box, it has a very similar design to its predecessor. The only thing that really stands out to me is that there's no notch. So if you are a Google Pixel 3 user, you can actually tell the difference just by holding it in your hand. Even though it has almost the same dimension as its predecessor, this phone is actually made out of polycarbonate, which is actually cheaper to manufacture, presumably. And the glass is not your standard Corning Gorilla glass. No, no, no. This is Dragon Trail glass, which I assume is actually cheaper to manufacture since this phone is actually a mid-tier phone. If you're wondering how much of a difference it actually costs, well, this in Singapore is $659 and this is $779. The Google Pixel 3 is $1,200 and the Google Pixel 3 XL is almost $1.4. Okay, that's a lot of difference. But how much are you actually compromising? Well, we'll get into the specs right now. So you're saving $600 for a lower cost phone. But at what cost? This phone is not water resistant. Unlike its flagship's rating of an IP68, this phone is only splash resistant. And for good reason, because this phone comes with a headphone jack. That's right, boom. Any phone with a headphone jack has a special place in my heart. When we're talking about the internal chipset, the Google Pixel 3 has a Snapdragon 845, whereas the Google Pixel 3a has a Snapdragon 670. So what does it actually mean to have a Snapdragon 845 go up against a Snapdragon 670? It just means that your apps will take slightly longer to load and run. But how much of a difference? Maybe 0.5 seconds to an actual second. Is that much of a difference? I don't think so. But is the price that much of a difference? I think so. And just like its predecessor, the Google Pixel 3a has 4 gigs of RAM and it only has 64 gigabytes of storage, unlike its predecessor where it has an option to go up to 128 gigabytes. And another thing that you're probably missing out on, even though honestly in my opinion it's not that important, is wireless charging. There's no glass back. However, Google kept the most important feature in this phone, which is your rear. 12.2 megapixel camera and your front facing 8 megapixel camera. However, the 3A does not come with an option for a wide angle front camera. But it's not a big issue for me because it's very rare that I have to use a wide angle selfie camera because you can always change your phone to landscape and still take the photo. It's no big deal. Now, these photos that you are looking at are taken by the Google Pixel 3A and the Google Pixel 3. Can you tell the difference? Because I can't. Well, maybe you can, a slight difference, but is it that much of a difference for you to maybe throw $600 away for? No, I don't think so. I'm not even going to tell you which phone is which because I didn't even bother editing the photo. Actually, you don't really need to. Look about the same. And also, all your Google photo features are still on the camera. You still got your night sight, you still got your AR playground, and now there's a new time-lapse feature. Good for traveling. Maybe not a day-to-day -day basis. So why am I hyping up this phone when there is so much to compromise on? Well, that is because I'm at an age where I want to save money. The average Singaporean can actually afford a high-end premium phone with a contract plan. However, you know phones will always get updated every quarter of the year. So you want to stay in tune with technology. So of course, maybe you can't change over your contract plan and you just want to buy the phone. For $600 to a $700 phone, 
Do you need to get a new plan for this? No! You can buy it off the shelf, dude. It's already available in Singapore, all right? So at the end of the day, why would you get this phone? It's a mid-tier phone with premium-like quality. Need I say more? All right, guys, so let me know in the comments down below whether you're Team Pixel or not and whether you are considering getting the Google Pixel 3a or not. Once again, thank you to Google Singapore for inviting the team over. We had a huge blast. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time on Review and Review. Bye-bye.